Arrogance destroys adaptations. Recently, we had the Obi-Wan Kenobi writer who spoke about recontextualizing the future. If you're arrogant, you think you're better than the original piece of work. You don't have to stick to canon anymore, no. You can go back in time, insert yourself into the canon, and then you can just start changing that canon to make it feel less arbitrary in your mind, to help reinforce or better articulate a piece of the jigsaw that's already in place. Arrogance leads a creator to not just do what the original author would have done, but to fix it, to change it, to mold it into what they would have done. This is how they end up destroying work, because they're never as talented as the original author, because if they were, they would have been able to create their own product, not take somebody else's IP. And in Rings of Power, there's signs of the same issue. Now, the Empire magazine that recently came out a few days ago is overall a better piece of marketing than they've done before. They've clearly listened to some of the comments that came around the trailer and everything else. They're paying lip service to the problems. Their problem is that arrogance still shines through. As one of the directors recently said, that Rings of Power is not TV, but a new form of entertainment. And however you spin Rings of Power, all it is, is a television show. They are so desperate, so full of themselves to make it seem as if they're creating something absolutely amazing, something no one has ever seen before, when really they're just doing the same thing people have been doing for decades. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's like admitting I'm making a YouTube video in my front room. But some people lose that grounding and the ego gets in the way. What I'm doing is something special. I'm not making TV. I'm changing the world. And The Empire Magazine is a better piece of marketing than before, but that's not really saying much. And my problem is, if everything they say in this is true, how come there's so many contradictions in it? If arrogance can be the downfall of an adaptation, then humility can definitely save it. The knowledge and acceptance that this isn't your property. You couldn't have made this. It's more popular than what you can do. That provides a respect for the work and a knowledge and acceptance that you shouldn't change it. Peter Jackson made comments along these lines when it came to the movies, and Rings of Power was criticized for their actions when it came to the trailers, and the showrunners have changed their tune, at least making some of the right sounds on the issue. They say the pressure would drive us insane if we didn't feel like there was a story here that didn't come from us. It came from a bigger place. It came from Tolkien, and we're just the stewards of it. We trust these ideas so deeply because they're not ours. We're custodians at best. But I call it lip service because their words directly contradict reality. Their problem is that they've already filmed the series, they've already got the marketing pictures, and they directly contradict any idea that this is Lord of the Rings. I mean, if you just look at the pictures, does this scream Lord of the Rings to you? Or does it just scream generic fantasy that could basically be anything? Do you look at Lenny Henry's Harfoot and immediately think, oh yeah, that's Hobbit adjacent, as was so kindly put. <laughs> and so it doesn't matter what sweet nothings the showrunners say to the media, how they try and change their marketing strategy based on the poor reception before. The actual product that they're trying to sell people will forever remain the same. Maybe that realization is why people are pushing the angle that, hey, most TV shows don't get great until season three. You should really just have faith in the showrunners because let's face it, <laughs> Rings of Power is gonna take till season three before it even becomes good. Don't judge it until season three, folks. That is obviously the reasonable response that you should take. And if you don't agree with that, then I can only apologize for the opinion that the social media algorithm has made you think. Because the majority of people are just happy to revisit Middle-earth in any medium, no matter what the quality is, as long as they're willing to wait to season three. And that's just if we look at one quote and the product, because if you compare it to the other things that they say in the article, you get a very different picture. If you see yourself with humility, if you recognize that this is not your IP, you would assume that you would want to stick to the law, stick to the canon, stick to the text which is already there. But that, as we all know, isn't actually what these showrunners intend. No, they want to ensure they're bringing something fresh to Lord of the Rings and expanding it. We weren't interested in a sequel or a prequel or a rehash or nostalgia. It had to stand on its own two feet as something that felt faithful, but was its own thing. It was very important to them that this was completely unrelated to anything Tolkien had actually written. I don't know, doesn't seem like you're quite that respectful to me. Now, we already know from Wheel of Time that even if Amazon does have all of the books and the script written out for them by the original author, they'll just throw that out of the window and completely ignore it. So them not having the rights to most of the stuff that talks about this period is purely coincidental at best, a happy accident. No, instead, they make it very clear that we didn't want to do a TV version of Lord of the Rings. We wanted to do a story in Middle-earth that deserves its own space on the shelf, alongside the novels and the films. 
We're shooting here for something which is as good as the books, which should be right next to them, even though it's unrelated. Because remember, this isn't a sequel or a prequel, which by definition means it's unrelated. And despite them saying Rings of Power doesn't try to compete with Peter Jackson, you setting your TV series in a different time period will not escape that. A quality bar has been set for a visual representation of Tolkien's work, and at the end of the day, you can either meet that bar, or you will be criticised for being below that bar. And I have to say, you kind of brought that on yourselves when you talk about how it's not TV and you're inventing an entirely new form of entertainment, and start talking about the five seasons of The Rings of Power as actually not television. It's a 50-hour movie. You're the ones that called yourself a 50-hour movie, so of course you're going to be compared to the movies. It's this idea that they could just put anything in, regardless of whether it should be there or not, which led to the Harfoots, something that Lenny Henry has described as a nomadic tribe moving with the weather and the fertility of the crops. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, if you're planting crops, you're not nomadic. Crops take a long time to grow, and destroying the fertility of land takes decades. You can talk about having big caravans on wooden wheels, but that seems a bit redundant when you shouldn't be moving for like 50 to 100 years until you've actually destroyed the ground that you're growing the crops on. There's a reason why nomadic tribes such as the Mongols hunted meat, because if you hunt meat, you can move from area to area and still feed yourselves. Crops, generally renowned for being static, unless you're taking the whole idea of runner beans, literally. I'm not sure how much use those wooden wheels will be when you've got to wait till next season to harvest your corn. Something else of interest is when it comes to the budgets. This is something which has happened repeatedly over the Wheel of Time, Halo, and now Rings of Power. Sure, you can hear how all these things cost hundreds of millions of dollars to make, and then you look at the screen and you think, where on earth did that go? The article itself talks about how the one billion dollar figure which has been touted around is actually obviously 250 million for the rights and 465 to produce season one. But they do say that this is essentially just a good headline for people to latch onto. They want it to make it sound impressive but it's not as actually as impressive as it sounds and that won't be seen directly on the screen. Because she says they reminded people that this is being spent to sustain the whole series. And you have to ask yourself, what do they mean by that? Well, the Wongring.net explained for us. Shepperton. Amazon has made a deal to shoot at Shepperton. They are building wow. one million square feet of new studio space. A one million square foot production area doesn't come cheap. And what budget is that coming out of? Now, obviously, the production of Rings of Power is moving away from New Zealand to the UK. So the first series, which is already filmed, presumably had all of its New Zealand production costs in this 465 million. And that's all wasted now, <laughs> because for the future, we've got to build this entire warehouse. Which budget is that coming from? Is any of that in this $465 million figure? Because apparently that money is being spent to sustain the whole series. So when we hear these big impressive numbers, you kind of think it's going to be spent on costumes and sets, when actually a lot of it could just be dumped into the building. And that explains why things on the screen don't look as good as you think they should. For instance, wearing fabric chainmail rather than actual chainmail. And all of this seems to play in to that arrogance, that ego. We're not making a TV series, we're making a new form of entertainment. Everything's got to be bigger. We've got to spend this absolute fortune to create it. So much so that we don't have that much left to put it on the screen. Money doesn't make a great TV series. Stargate SG-1 was incredible, and yet their sets left a lot to be desired. I'll easily look over bad sets if the story is good. But when you go around shouting from the rooftops about how much money you've spent, it does lead people to expect more. And that more isn't what we're being shown in the screenshots. That's why you can talk a big game and talk yourself into a lot of trouble. And talking yourself into trouble seems to be something that Rings of Power specializes in. And for that, you have to look no further than Lenny Henry. Lenny Henry has been active in the UK for my entire life. His earliest television appearance was on New Faces on a talent show in 1975 when he was 16. I grew up with Lenny Henry. He was a comedian. He was awesome. I thought he was great. Lenny Henry was a core part of my childhood. So it's weird to me that he's trying to rewrite history as if he's been some downtrodden peasant, which is why it's so bizarre to see him attack his own integrity and that of the Rings of Power with some weird twisted ideology. Because as he says, Rings of Power has offered him the opportunity to shift the needle on a world which previously hadn't intended to feature people who weren't cream. Guy has literally had a career on television my entire life. If you can't see it, you can't be it. So 
anyone born in my entire lifetime has been able to see it. Let alone the fact that that argument is complete trash. Because let's say that nobody was around when he was a kid, uh, he, he still became it. It's almost like Lenny Henry's success is down to him being a talented human being, not because he had a certain biological chemical composition. He says, finally, finally, after his entire life in television, kids are going to be able to see people who aren't cream taking up space in the center of a fantasy series. We're very visible in this world, and that's exciting. It's so exciting that no one's possibly may be able to see this in his entire career on television, my entire life. But my favorite part of his comment is this idea of see people taking up space. How humiliating, how degrading, how dehumanizing a language can you possibly have as saying you're just taking up space? We're not talking about his acting talent or his career or anything else that he could possibly achieve. No, instead, he's taking up space. He's existing. He's basically moving oxygen out of a place that it would have been if he wasn't there. That's the grand total of his achievement, is it? Someone who spent his entire life since he was 16 on television is now just dehumanized to a place where on Rings of Power he's simply taking up space. Lenny, I think you're awesome, but I don't know why you've allowed yourself to be degraded in this manner to where you will use that terminology about yourself. Because uh, quite frankly, I think it's horrific. Hey, call me old-fashioned, but I thought we'd move past the point where people would get excited about their place on a Dulux paint chart. So where are we after the Empire marketing? I think they've definitely listened to some of the things which have happened in the past, but their issue is it's too late to change any of it. You can make all the right noises about how this is Tolkien and how you really respect Tolkien, but none of that means a single jot if you're then showing us a TV series, which clearly doesn't. And then for some reason, you're getting Lenny Henry to come out and spout this drivel, which I don't even know how he could possibly believe after the life he has led in the UK. This doesn't sound like it was said by someone that grew up in Britain and has lived an entire career over here. No, it sounds more like it's just pandering to an American cultural pressure point. Which is weird when you think about it for a show which is inherently English. Or at least it should be. Instead, it sounds like it's been twisted. It sounds like it's been altered by an external force. So Amazon can try and change their words and their marketing to fit around Rings of Power. To try and convince people that actually this is something which it doesn't seem to be. But that's what it remains. Because however you try and spin it, the pictures are right there. The footage is going to be shown. And it doesn't matter how you try and spin it or frame it. Perception isn't reality. Reality is. And trying to come up with ways to force feed this on people and convince people that they shouldn't trust their lying eyes. I can't see how you think that's going to work. Especially when you've got the director coming out and saying, I'm inventing new forms of entertainment. This isn't television. I mean, what is it? If it's not television, is it art? No, no, you're just a load of people pretending you're something on a screen. And despite them talking about how much action is in every episode of this series, something which would definitely appeal to me, by the way, I do worry what's gonna happen to your budget. You've spent all this money to film a series and then you're going to move countries and build an entirely new studio. All of that money has got to come out of the budget which should have gone into what we see on the screen and it now can't. Time after time we've seen marketing strategy be altered, changed, not focus on just showing us the TV series, but focus on trying to convince us or hide it or use tricks of marketing. Well-known tricks, by the way. Tricks like releasing your NDA of the showrunner interview at 4 or 5 p.m. on a Friday in the UK time so that no one can write articles about it in the press. Have you heard about that? Were there videos made about that? Articles anywhere about that? No. It's almost like it was buried. It's almost like you do things at that time. So it's buried. We released the Empire Magazine article, something we built up for over a week. Get all of the attention, all of the journalist articles on this. And then, on a Friday, we released the NDA of some super fans that went to London, just at the end of the work week, when everyone's going home and no one has time to talk about it. I'm not going into anything that the showrunners have said there, I imagine it's very similar to what they said in the Empire article itself. But, the tactic itself is very well known and, um... It's not normally a sign of confidence. And shouldn't you be confident in this? If you're spending this much money, shouldn't you be confident? Because if you've got to come out with various different framing tactics and marketing methods to try and convince people that no, really, we're doing something which we clearly aren't. So those tactics don't strike me that you have a lot of faith in your own creation. And if you don't, and you're going to be the person who should have the most faith in it, 
then it's not a good sign for everyone else, which is probably why I shouldn't be judging it until season three, and I should just have faith no matter what happens. And hey, I mean, I might disagree. I might think for myself, but then again, maybe that's just the social media algorithm making me think that. Or maybe, maybe I've just got more sense. Well, that's my thoughts. Let me know yours down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.